Hey everybody, welcome back to Overland Florida. I'm Kevin. I'm just hanging out in my little shop in my backyard. Um, this weekend we went camping at Jenny Springs and we just got back this evening. I was just putting away my camping gear. I got the battery banks and my backup refrigerator over there. And I get so many questions regarding on places to go camping, beach camping, where to overland in Florida that I decided um, if this video goes over really well and I get a lot of response and comments back, um, I will turn this into a three part uh, video and I will give you guys just lists of places to go camping on the East Coast, the West Coast, and then just scattered throughout Central Florida. Um, so pay attention, there's going to be a lot of facts, and if you guys have any questions or if I say something wrong and you need to correct me, feel free to do so in the comments. So we'll see how this goes. So this video is basically for people that are vacationing to Florida, or people that are in the state of Florida that are just getting into camping or want to start overlanding. Those are probably most of the questions that I get. Um, from different people throughout the state and even just the southeast. So when people think about overlanding, they probably think about being gone for days, um, a weekend, even a week or even longer. So for those people, yes, they need to carry lots of fuel with them, lots of water, um, food, um, that's where refrigerators come in handy, um, being off-grid solar panels. Well, that's all fine and dandy. Out west they have BLM land, which is Bureau of Land and Management and you're free to camp out there, people pretty much live out there, you can stay for like 14 days at a time before you gotta like change your location or it might even be longer than that now. But Florida does not have that. Um, Florida doesn't have any Bureau of Land Management areas. We really don't have a whole lot of land open to the public, believe that or not. Uh, Florida is 40 million acres and we have just under 1 million acres of that 40 that are available for public camping. What we do have are 175 state parks and we have 11 national parks scattered out throughout the state. Now, with those national parks, only three of them, I believe, offer primitive camping. Um, you have Everglades National Park down south, which has a lot of campgrounds and pretty big campgrounds at that, but they're all traditional campgrounds where you have designated sites, power, water, utilities, and stuff like that. Um, Ocala National Forest, Osceola National Forest, and Apalachicola National Forest offer primitive camping, but even then, that's all combined about a million acres, even with, even with those three national parks, you're only allowed to camp in designated areas during certain times of the year, and there's rules with that as well. You can't be too far from a road, you can't be too close from a road, you can't be within so many feet of a body of water, and you also aren't supposed to have a trailer, a rooftop tent. You're not supposed to sleep in your vehicle or on top of your vehicle. So basically the only camping that they approve is either just laying on the ground, you know, in a sleeping bag next to a campfire, a ground tent, or a hammock. Now that does sound silly and I think it's just outdated. Um, obviously by watching my videos you'll know that um, we use rooftop tents, we use trailers, we sleep in the back of our trucks. It's never been an issue. I think it's just one of those old rules that was just never changed or they use it to their advantage if there's a huge group of people being obnoxious or if there's a huge group of people it's just too large, too wild, out of control, um, they can start enforcing those rules, start weeding people out. But other than that, I wouldn't worry about um, camping, whether you have a trailer, you know, rooftop tent or something like that. What I would worry about is just being in a spot of the forest you're not supposed to be in. But if you go to their website, um, it's pretty cut and dry where you're supposed to be. There's a lot of maps. You can even go to a ranger station inside the national forests and get that information as well. Um, you don't want to be caught uh, outside of a designated area, um, not just for your sake, but you don't want to ruin it and get it shut down for everybody else. Other than the national parks that we have, we do have state forests and they are scattered through the state and they are pretty nice parks. They don't have all the amenities you need, but if you're someone that's overlanding or just want to be primitive without you know, showers, water, electricity, stuff like that, they are really good parks. Um, probably the most popular would be the Citrus Wildlife Management Area and Holder Mine Campground. That's probably the number one uh, popular site in Central Florida. There's probably 25, 30 campsites there. Um, they do have hookups, they do have really nice showers, but it is located inside um, Citrus Wildlife Track and it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of dirt roads to cruise, uh, cruise around. There's some hidden springs and there's also Dame's Cave, which is really popular, but we'll save that for another another topic, another video, but we do have state forests on a local level, and but then again, you can't just park wherever you want, set up camp. There are designated areas, and you have to be inside those bounds, otherwise FWC will come and issue a citation. 
As I said earlier, we do have 175 state parks and they are some of the most beautiful state parks. Florida is really well known for its state parks. So well known, not just for the state parks, but the weather, that a lot of the state parks are booked up over a year in advance. So um, if you're local trying to camp, good luck getting campsite on a weekend. Um, a lot of the snowbirds and people from uh, all over the country like to come down to Florida for our weather, especially during the winter time and early spring time. Some of my favorite state parks that just pop off the top of my head um, that you're not going to really see anywhere else in the country are going to be found in the Keys. The Heo Honda State Park is one of my favorites. Um, there are campsites right on the edge of the water and whether you have an RV, a tent, a rooftop tent, um, you're going to be right on the edge of the water. You can snorkel, paddleboard, kayak, canoe, boat right from your campsite and there are some huge loggerhead turtles. I'm talking massive that will come up right up to your campsite and you can just jump in and snorkel right alongside of them. And that's pretty cool. Also, there's John Penny Camp Coral Reef State Park, and they have all kinds of tours. They have all kinds of kayak rentals, paddleboard rentals, um, just just a pretty cool campground. All the sites are really close together, so just know that your fire pit's probably gonna be less than 20 feet from the fire pit next to you, um, but that's just because, you know, the whole key is it's only about a mile wide, so they gotta cram a whole bunch of people in there. Um, but then again, you're just going to be at the camp just to sleep, maybe cook, or you know, cool off, take a nap during the day. Other than that, you should be out exploring the Keys. But they do have um, a snorkel tour, boot, tour boat that goes out, and it'll take you to the um, Christ of the Abyss. And it's a statue underwater. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the picture of it, um, but it's just a, a statue of Christ. He's got his hands like this, and there's all kinds of just tropical fish, and you can snorkel or dive down there and get your picture with them and everything. And it's just a really cool experience. Um, underwater, all the fish are just so bright and and a tropical. You're not really going to see that too many other places. Um, up on the east coast, you have um, Gamble Rogers Memorial State Park, and that's another one right on the coast. I mean, where uh, Ron and I parked and had our fire ring and were camping, we were probably 20 feet from the sand, and you can just hear the ocean coming in all night. It's nice and breezy. That's a pretty good state park. Um, but yeah, there's all kinds of them. Like I said, there's 175 of them all throughout the state of Florida. And I haven't even been to probably half of them. And not many people know about this, but you can try to buy these from uh, the campgrounds themselves. Otherwise, you can get it online. But it's a passport book. And there's a page for every state park in the state of Florida. And when you go to the state parks and you go to check in, they have stamps. And they'll stamp your passport. And it'll just prove that you were there. And it's just kind of cool to look through, find new state parks and stuff like that. So I recommend that. Um, if you're coming to Florida, if you're traveling, or um, you're just looking for a new hobby and you want to go sightseeing or go on some some uh, some road trips, get a passport for the state of Florida. It has pictures and things to do, all the amenities, and it's it's really helpful. I have one to keep in my glove box in my truck, and um, sometimes I don't always get it stamped. I kind of forget sometimes, but usually I'll go to a state park, you know, more than a few times. So I'll get it I'll get it stamped eventually. So probably the number one question of all time that I get all the time, I'm talking Instagram, Facebook messages, emails, all the time is where to go overland or car camp, beach camping in the state of Florida. Now a year ago, just before COVID hit, I would have told you Peters Point Park, uh, Amelia Island, Jacksonville, Florida. Um, it was $5 a night or you get a pass for like $25 from the gas station and if you're a Florida resident you could go all year for $25. Um, that was a lot of fun. You could only go about 400 yards, which uh, that was pretty good for us. There's really nowhere else in Florida to go camping on the beach um, with your vehicle anyways. Like I said, we never had any problems. You could bring generators, you could have fires and stuff like that. But all the private condo owners um, were like in cahoots with the county letting you know these rednecks come on their beach and you know lower their property value. So they were looking for any excuse. They've tried for years to get it closed down and you know it's eventually gotten smaller and smaller and smaller and then COVID hit and that was a perfect excuse to uh, never open it back up. Um, you can go for the day and you can drive on the beach and park and enjoy the water and everything but you're not allowed to camp there anymore especially with your vehicle so that's pretty unfortunate. So my number two choice, so Peters Point was number one unfortunately can't do that anymore. The only place, now Florida has 1,350 miles of coastline. 1,350 coastline, I'll say it again. The only place you're legally allowed to drive a vehicle on the beach, set up camp wherever you want, and have fires in the sand is in um, Shired Island, which is like just north of uh, Horseshoe Beach on the 
Gulf side of the state, uh, the West Coast. So Shired Island is a really, really interesting place, especially if you've never been on like that part of Florida. Dixie County is just a really old, you know, poor county, if you will. Um, the water quality there is not very well. Um, many, many years ago, they used to just basically dump like all their sewage, the city sewage and stuff like that right there into the bay. So um, I wouldn't go swimming in the water. The water is not really pretty. It's not like you're going to be in Clearwater Beach. There's really not too much white beach sand, if you will. It's kind of just more rocky. Um, but there's good fishing out there. You see a lot of people fishing, uh, a lot of airboats and stuff like that. But the campground itself, so um, you're not really going to find any information online. Um, it's kind of just one of those, um, if you know, you know places. But you're going to drive out there. It's pretty small. Um, there are covered pavilions, there is power, there are a few RV sites that have full hookups. Um, there are some showers um, and water, but like I said, I would not touch the water. It's really sulfur. It's, it's almost brown, but it smells horrible. So I'd bring your own water with you, uh, especially if you want to shower and wash up and you're going to use it to cook and stuff. But uh, like I said, it's one of the only places in the state of Florida. It's really sad because everything in Florida is either a preserve or it's private property. Some condo owns it and they don't want people um, on their beach. So um, Shired Island is one of the last places. Um, it's $10 cash if you were using a tent or a hammock and it's $20 if you're going to bring a trailer or sleep inside your vehicle or something like that. And the only way to pay is there's a gentleman that rides in on a golf cart at 8 o'clock in the morning and whether you're sleeping or not he's going to knock on your tent knock on your car, knock on your RV, and you better pay up. So it's pretty it's pretty interesting, but you know, that's just how some old Florida places are. So uh, I'm starting to ramble on, this video is going to get really long. So uh, if I haven't bored you enough, like I said, if you guys really like these uh, videos, um, I can make this into like three parts. I can tell you all the places on the East Coast in one video, all the places on like the West Coast in the next video. Um, like I said, it's pretty disappointing uh, for people that want to come here and they're like, oh man, uh, where can we go, you know, primitive camping, just drive out into the woods and set up camp. And uh, I hope they don't feel like I'm a jerk when I tell them there really isn't any place. There really isn't anywhere you can go on the beach and just drive and set up camp and uh, stay as long as you want. So unfortunately, ho hopefully this, uh, you know, clears up some questions and, uh, and give you guys some answers. But if you have any more questions, feel free to leave a comment. Um, I'm pretty knowledgeable about you know stuff throughout the state. Um, I've been doing this a pretty long time. Uh, people don't realize is when I met Ron, we were on the same schedule uh, shift work wise, so we were both off 14 to 16 days a month. And back in my old job, um, I had 20 weeks of vacation a year, so I would take off a week every month. So that's 12. That's 12 weeks a year. And then during like the Fourth of July and other weekends like that, I would take um, two or three weeks off at a time. So. I'd have off between 16 and 20 weeks of vacation a year, and Ron and I camped twice a week for over two years. So we're pretty well known um, just for just going out and camping and just doing stuff out in the woods, having fun. Um, we tried to film as much as, as we could to share with you guys and give you guys ideas. So anyway, if you guys like this video, you found this helpful, please, please, please give it a share, uh, give it a like, leave a comment, and uh, I'll try to put out another one in a few days.